I'll take es his name's Esperanza. I'll explain a little bit about him first. Over the last five years, there's only been one American Bullfrog and one Northern Green Frog episode to feature in all of Frog Week. Creating an episode featuring both of these animals was not very high on my bucket list considering the fact that they eat all of the target species that I work to conserve. That all changed whenever I donated the project to the nonprofit PA Woods and Forests. I found the American toads, the green frogs, the bullfrogs, the gray tree frogs, everybody was on the same team, and everybody needed conservation for their habitat and for their species. I try to make every episode meaningful, and the only way I was going to make this episode any sense of meaningful was to actually describe these animals for who they truly were. They're the predators of the target species that we care about, but they also deserve their right to live. They're native species in their own right, and they are frogs and toads. So they deserved and needed their own episode in Frog Week. So that's why we're focusing on dedicating this whole episode to the largest frog in Pennsylvania and another very aggressive and carnivorous species, the Northern Green Frog. The American Bullfrog is by far the largest Pennsylvania frog species that we have, and it very well could be the largest frog in the United States. These frogs can overpower and consume any other frog or toad in Pennsylvania. They're also notorious for eating small birds, small rodents, crayfish, and many aquatic invertebrates. The American Bullfrog is one of the most successful amphibians around. They're actually invading the western part of the United States, and some even blame them for the decline of the red-legged and yellow-legged frogs in California. These bullfrogs are a thorn in my side trying to do this seven-year American toad and wood frog conservation project. As you can see, this female American bullfrog has been the culprit of consuming a handful of American toads, at least two of them that I'm aware of so far in 2023. We had about 18 to start, and as far as I know, we're down 16. In most cases, frogs and toads stay away from the water where the bullfrogs are because they know it's certain danger, and the American bullfrogs, if they can catch you, they're going to eat you. And that's the case in this plant nursery, as there were no frogs or toads at the vernal pools or ponds where the bullfrogs were hanging out. There's a lot of danger being a suburban American toad or wood frog. Not only do you have to face the challenges the bullfrogs present to you at the pond, and the stray cats present to you close to the road, but then you have these backyard raccoons that invade bird feeders and other things that a lot of the neighbors put out for the wild birds. These raccoons are attracted to the bird seed, and if they would have discovered the eggs or the adults, they would have quickly consumed as many American toads and wood frogs that they could find, and they would keep coming back until they ate them all. So of course, seeing this on the trail camera made red flags go up in my mind, and I knew that this was a high risk situation, and we had to act quickly if we were going to save our conservation project. These raccoons could have easily destroyed the conservation project that I've been building with both species. So we had first to deploy our guard dog, and then we had to improvise from there. One creature we often see whenever we're out doing field work at night with frogs and toads is another target species of PA woods and forests, the white lip globe snail. This is a creature that I take to do critter talks and it's one of my favorite creatures to see. Maria's found one of our target species here. This is a native land snail. He's hanging out here. Yeah, this is a native species. These are one of my favorite creatures that come out. So this is a good indicator of a healthy ecosystem. They're out here eating. It looks like they're even hanging out in the grass and the gravel. Um, I think they're getting, let's see if we can
hear the owls. This, this is what the snails are eating. They're eating just gravel, but they're using that gravel for their shells. That's how they're able to store the calcium that they need. Look at this guy. He was a good find here, Maria. My name is Aaron Capoli, and I'm the president and founder of PA Woods and Forests. It's a conservation nonprofit that I founded a year and a half ago to focus on target species like frogs and toads, carnivorous plants, different invertebrates. We have all kinds of stuff that we're doing. Um, I'll get into who I am in a second, but I want to share some really exciting things with you. So this is a carnivorous plant. This is a purple pitcher plant. Has anybody ever seen this in the county? So his name is Esperanza. It means hope in Spanish. Uh, and let me come back here with them so everybody can see. So he, this is his first time probably ever seeing people like this. He's probably never seen people. Um, he's a very well-behaved frog. If he does jump, he does. He's a wild frog. I'm not going to fault him. Um, but he's from Cambria County. He's from an area that's being timber harvested. Let's see if he'll eat here. So it's got to be very gentle. Notice that I'm not holding him like this. I'm giving him a lot of respect. And because I respect him like this, he doesn't he doesn't freak out. I'm a licensed state educator, so that means I have the ability to rescue frogs and toads. I have the ability to keep some of them in captivity, but these guys do not make good pets. Um, I probably spend about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a year just in vet bills, not counting how much I feed them, not counting the lights or anything else that I have to use. So uh, that is by no means a good habitat. He's literally in quarantine. The Esperanza, and that is Spanish for hope. And the reason why I chose that name for this frog is because he lives in an area in Cambria County, he's actually a Cambria County frog, uh, where they're doing a lot of deforestation and they're cutting down a lot of trees. And these animals need trees because he's a tree frog, right? So uh, there's a lot of problems where he's from. and it's left me a little bit concerned for his future and for the, his peers, everybody that is a part of his family. And I've gone up there and I've been doing a lot of projects trying to help manage the population and take care of these guys. Where Esperanza lives, the other frogs seem to be doing okay. They seem to be handling it well, as well as they could be. So there is some hope that these frogs are gonna continue to survive and the, reason, the other reason why one of the different aspects about Frog Week this year compared to all the others, it's not just about citizen science anymore, it's also about outreach. So you can see the critter talks and the frog walks and even my pets have become a major part of this conservation project. And I can't say enough about not only Esperanza, but meet Jack, the newest American toad, who's gonna grace us in one of the biggest projects for the YouTube channel for Woods and Forest Media to come. Jack is the perfect example of what an ordinary average American toad looks like, and I'm perfectly fine with that. He's going to make the perfect educational animal. He's not going to be too big or too flashy. This is exactly what you can expect when you find an American toad in Pennsylvania. He is just your average run-of-the-mill toad. Like he's, you know, he doesn't have anything that separates him per se from anybody else, but. Um, that's okay, like, they don't all have to be the most unique looking animals, you know, I'm not going to reptile expos and hand picking them. I'm just taking who I think has the best bet for, for what I'm trying to do. I can't wait to share Jack on the YouTube channel and the Instagram page for the Woods and Forests media community. You guys are all going to have the chance to see this little guy's story unfold in front of us. Special thanks to Maria for taking a lot of these pictures and sharing this experience with me because we all know how much I love American Toads and having her there made this moment even better. We can't forget about the northern green frog whenever we're talking about the predators. Now I don't have any crazy scenes of them eating frogs and toads, but I do want to give a special thanks to the carnivorous plant nursery in Collin for allowing us to film these northern green frogs reproducing on a crazy humid thunderstorm night down in Maryland at the carnivorous plant nursery. Thank you for letting us film this and see all of the neat plants. 
but talking about the northern green frog, they're one of the few species that'll eat tadpoles, they'll eat metamorphed frogs, and they'll also eat very young adult frogs and toads of all four of the target species. So they can become a nuisance if you're trying to do a conservation project. These guys have sometimes even been described as the reason the northern leopard frog has declined in a lot of its range because they outcompete and even sometimes consume them. So this is one of the species, although it doesn't eat the adults, it'll destroy the juveniles and the offspring for all of the target species. But how cool was that to see the start and finish of green frogs reproducing while we talk about them for a slight moment in this video. Once again, I want to give a special thanks to Josh's Frogs, who sponsored all five years of the Frog Week project. I couldn't have done any of this without you guys, giving me an even bigger platform to share this project with. Of course, special thanks to the Erie Zoo and Feeple Credit Union for partnering with us. Special thanks to Laurel View Village for having me for a Critter Talk. And of course, thanks again Colin and the Carnivorous Plant Nursery for allowing us last year to come down and film Frogs and Toads in the Pitcher Plants. Thank you guys for making all of these different things become a reality. No, you're not listening to the early spring and the night of the American toads. These American toads were at far greater risk than they'd ever been before because the bullfrogs were out and they were hungry. Could be looking at one of the very last times that we see this toad because there are, well, one bullfrog is a toad eater and there's really not a whole lot I can do. Um, I offered it some food here because it looked a little thin and we hydrated this toad the best we could. But the bullfrog is here. It's on the other side of the pond coming out of the water. It's probably looking to hunt this toad so I brought it over on the other side. Not that we don't, you know, we do like bullfrogs, but these toads are so important for the breeding program that's been going on for the last seven years. So if this is the last time that I see this toad, I just wanna document it and you know, get a chance to see it. But you can see the bullfrog right there. It's coming out of the water. You know, that's not an accident. And the other toad is over there, and there's a bullfrog who suffered an injury, so I don't think that bullfrog is any threat to that toad. So we've at least got two toads, but generally that doesn't really matter. This frog is a toad eater. Uh, it's a female bullfrog, very healthy. I understand that they have to eat too, but whenever it's your favorite animal that's getting eaten by them, it makes you kind of not a big fan of them. Again, I get it, they have to eat too, but you know, not my, not my favorite situation. But this female bullfrog could potentially be the, the reason why some of these toads are not making appearances every year because she's eating them. So the bad news is I'm standing here with a toad that has passed away. I saw it yesterday almost look like there are ticks on it. Those are rocks. But it's really disappointing to see this happen. Hopefully this toad was one of those that was able to reproduce. Well, this is not one of my pets. I still feel obligated to, to bury it here because it was part of this environment. So 
like we're gonna we're gonna bury this toad. He died with his hands folded. It's hard to say whether or not the pursuit from that American bullfrog led to the demise of this American toad. There could be a lot of different variables. Raccoons, cats, cars, insecticides. I mean, these are suburban frogs and toads. But one thing to take away from this episode is that American bullfrogs and green frogs are not monsters and they do have a right to live. They do have a right to the pond and they're an animal that we need to respect, especially in conservation. Oftentimes they're overlooked because they're the predators, but without them, sick animals would persist and they would actually cause even more of a decline to the population of American toads and wood frogs. So in some ways they could be looked at as a necessary evil, in other ways just as a regular animal trying to live its life no different from the American toads and the wood frogs that call this pond and this whole area home. I can't wait to share the last two episodes of Frog Week 2023 with you guys tomorrow. I'm so excited, but don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends for more Frog Week content. Tomorrow is the day, the grand finale, guys. I can't wait. Get ready, because you're going to see some of the most action-packed episodes of Frog Week that we've had all year. Man, I can't wait. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.